Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to Jack is off to another adventure. When it comes to early Chinese contributions to Northern California, most people will think about the gold rush and also the transcontinental railway. Now one contribution that isn't really talked about is agriculture. So I'm currently here in Rio Vista and behind me is the Sacramento River. Now this region used to flood all the time until the Chinese came and built levees and they were able to transform a once undesirable swampy land into prime agricultural real estate. Even after the levees were built, a lot of them stayed here to farm and therefore established a few Chad towns along the river. Today, a lot of the Chad towns have disappeared, but there are still some remnants I want to go check out today. So, if you want to learn more about the Chinese history in this region, then join me as Jack's off to the Sacramento Delta. Let's go. All right, so we made it to our first town called Ayotin. And right here, welcome to Ayotin Main Street Shops right here. So we're going to go down the Main Street and see what we can see. Check out this chainmail. You even got a face mask on and goggles. Good job, buddy. And then let's look across the street. We have Leesboro dry goods. I'm assuming that's a Chinese Lee. Well, you never know, it could be a Korean or American Lee. And inside some of these stores, you'll see like some Chinese like decorations and also like lions, lion dancings. You got more over here, the lantern, you got cranes. If you look inside, you'll see like firecrackers and stuff. But yeah, let's keep going. Look at that building. It says what Fa Zhao Lao Hua Zhao Lao. So it used to be a restaurant. Let's take a closer look at this. No longer in business, but we got some remnants right here. And check out this building right here. I came here to this town because of this building right here, the Bing Gong Tong, and then you have the Zhong Wa Hao. Let's get a closer look. It's probably not the original building, but it looks remodeled, which is good. Keeping the memories of Chinese history here alive, you know, you know what I mean? They're doing some renovations in there. And then you have the Mei Wa beer room. This used to be a Chinese brothel, gambling hall, and opium den. Now this is a beer room, so not much of a difference. Just look at the all these pictures in here. Wow. Nudity. Not safe for YouTube. So yeah, if you want to see some pictures of how it used to look like, you can go to the Maywat beer room and check that place out. They got a lot of records of pictures and stuff. Pretty interesting. All right, so there's really not much going on in the streets, but I do want to show you this, a pavilion, Chinese Labor Memorial Pavilion. Let's take a closer look. Here you have the Chinese people building the levees. You have some Chinese characters, harmony, prosperity, sincerity. They're all rhyming. Health, be, love, li, and one day, one dollar. That's how much they used to work for. And this place has been modernized. How do you know? They have outlets here. So for those of you who need to charge your devices, definitely come here. Wow, they actually have a Chinese restaurant here called Pineapple. And right here, Bo Lo, which is pineapple in Cantonese and see what kind of food they have here. There you go, Chinese food in Ailton. Hi! All 
All right, so you may have noticed that aside from a Chinatown, there used to be a Japan town here too. So what happened to all the Asian folks here? Well, for the Chinese, there were several mysterious fires that burned down Chinatown. And when I say mysterious, it was reported that they don't know who did it or why it was done, but we all know who did it. Fucking racist ass motherfuckers. Kind of like in Russia, right? People will mysteriously fall off of buildings and some of them mysteriously land on knives and stuff. So essentially the Chinese got fed up and they moved a few towns up north to a town called Lak, which we will check out in a little bit. And that's for the Japanese, when World War II happened, they were forced to relocate. And that's why there's not a lot of Asian people here in Ileton nowadays. All right, so I think that's it for Ileton. Let's go to our next town, Walnut Grove. We gotta drive up there, so let's go. All right, so we made it here to Walnut Grove. And based on what I know, there's not a lot of Chinese remnants left, but we do have another Bing Gong Tong right here. And I think this is the backside. So we can probably go see the front and it's supposed to look a lot nicer. So yeah, let's go to the front first. And here's the front right here. It's like Spanish stuff, so it's no longer like a Chinese only. They incorporated like the Hispanics over here too. Wow. Hi, hola. All right, so what makes Wanda Grove special is that not only was there a Chinatown here, there was a Japantown here. And the Japantown is still kind of here, so let's see if we can find some remnants of the old Japantown. Take a look at this. The Chinese Historic District we just came and all we saw was the Bingung Tong. So the Japanese Historic District. Let's see what we can find here. And right here, our first Japantown attraction, the Ka... I'm guessing it's the Kawamura Barbershop. So let's check this place out. I'm sure it's no longer a barbershop, but we got a picture of someone getting their hair cut. I'm assuming they're Japanese. It's a very small little shop. I mean, it's a barbershop. You don't need it to be that big. And let's see what else is down here. These I assume used to be Japanese buildings, whether it's business or residential. Nowadays, I think it's just private residence. Here we found it, the Hayashi Company. Oriental food, fresh fish, producto mexicanos, meat, groceries, beer, wine, liquor, Pepsi. I've actually never seen a Pepsi advertisement. It's usually Coca-Cola. So here you go. So back in the 1880s, when Congress passed the Chinese Exclusion Act, that barred Chinese people from immigrating here to the U.S. Well, the Americans here that worked with the Chinese knew how hardworking they were. So they were like, oh, there's no more Chinese people. Where do we find some hardworking Asian folks? The Japanese. So that's how the Japanese people settled here. And them too, similar to the Chinese, worked agriculture and did farm too. And like the similar story with Ayotin. 
When World War II came, they were forced to relocate, and therefore, Japantown is the way it is now. And here we have Walnut Groove Market. I'm not sure if this used to be Japanese owner or whatnot. It looks pretty old though. So far, every Japan town we've been to, whether it's San Francisco, San Jose, and even Salinas to a certain extent, we've seen a Buddhist temple or a Buddhist church. So I wonder if there's one here in Walnut Groove because there used to be a Japan town here. Let's go try to find one. Well, 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 look what I found here. Walnut Grove Buddhist Church. So there we go, we are 100%. Every time there's a Japan town, there's a Buddhist church or Buddhist temple. This is it right here. You got the bell right here. Is there even a bell inside? No, so you gotta hit it with something. All right, so I think that's it for Walnut Grove. We're gonna make our way up north, about a mile, to the main city of Lock. So let's go. Actually, just wait a second. Guess what I found on my way out? That's the Japanese language school, the Gakuen Hall, which is like a school. All right, so we've made it to Lok. In Cantonese, it's Lok which means happy residency. And like I've mentioned before, this was a very important Chinese community because a lot of towns were burned down, so the Chinese people moved here. They were centralized here. And nowadays, there's still a lot of remnants we can see. There's museums, there's shops. So let's go take a quick look. Let's go. All right, so this right here is the main street. How do we know? Main street. So yeah, let's go take a look. So here we have a Chinese school. It is now a museum. We have Sun Yat-sen, Dr. Sun Yat-sen, the most famous revolutionist of modern history, the catalyst to overthrowing the Qing Dynasty right there, and then this must be Mr. Confucius. That's right. And let's see. Let's go in there and check it out. Hi, right, thanks. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> huh. Wow. So as someone pointed out, see if I can extend it out of the way. So you have a picture of Reagan right there. And it says, make America great again. Did Trump steal from this dude? Yo. Anyways. All right, so this is a Chinese classroom back then, which is very similar to the Chinese school I was in when I was a kid in Chattown. Let's take a look. You have the wooden chairs with the bigger chairs in the back and then the shorter ones in the front. So, you know, they segregate you by height. So the taller you are, you sit in the back, even if you are nearsighted. And then we have some artwork right here. And check it out. They even got a piano because Chinese parents want their kids to learn two instruments, the piano and the violin. And there we go again, Sun Yat-sen the Kuomintang flag, the American flag. And I'm guessing this is a lesson you can watch about what happened to the residents of Lok. We also got pictures. So when you see these pictures, back then here in Lok, there used to be a lot of things going on. Just look at the crowd, it's very lively, festivals, whatnot, and nowadays, it's just a kind of like a live museum kind of. And yeah, you have some very important people out here. Some I do not recognize. And that is Chiang Kai-shek. And let's check out the books here. They probably taught about a lot about nationalism because you have, you know, the fundamentals of national, what is this? Reconstruction by Sun Yat-sen, actually, wow. So he actually wrote that book, that book too. And that makes a lot of sense because the Chinese that came here came before the Cultural Revolution. They came before the Chinese Civil War. So a lot of them, they were trying to save China from the Qing Dynasty. So a lot of people here, they looked up to Dr. Sun Yat-sen. So that's why you have a lot of his books and his teachings and stuff. So aside from school, this place used to have brothels, gambling dens, and also 
a Chinese medicine store. So I wonder if they have weed in there, some medicinal marijuana. And right here we have the Lock Memorial Park with one of these lions again with the Asian success perm. Let's go take a go. Oh, look at this monument right here. So they have something like this in Japantown too. I've never seen one for Chinatown. So let's see. This must be... Was this for the levees? This was uh, the railroad, agriculture, and this must be old lock how it looks like. So a little bit of history lesson here. And over here, you see a lot of plaques just donated by people, I would assume. Let's see if we can find some interesting ones right here. There you go, Sun Yat Sen again. And then the Taiwanese slash Kuomintang flag. Take a look at this. Locks and lock. Got a restaurant right here. How's it going, man? Good, how are you guys? Check out another museum. Let's go in there. Yeah, so think if you have any questions. So I'm not sure what the display here is. It's probably like normal life. We got a pool table, billiards. We have a mahjong table. We have some pictures. The famous lion dancing head. And this must be one of the old dresses for women. Again, another piano. Where's the violin at? All right, so this must be the kitchen area. These must be the walk station. Chinese people will be walking it up since early. This must be the dishwashing area right here. I wonder if these are original. But check it out, that must be the original 7-Up bottle. It used to be huge. Then you got the Coke, you got the Pepsi. You got your pans, your bowls. Where's the rice cooker? Or what did they use to cook rice back then? That I do not know. And then you got more bottles. Are there any beer here? Root beer. Not what I was looking for, but... Is that a, don't tell me this is a rice cooker. I don't think so, but it looks like a huge one though. There's a lot of things here. I don't know what they are, but some of them you can probably guess just by looking at it. Got the picture of the king. I don't know who, which king this one is. It's probably not the last emperor. The last emperor was a guy by the name of Puyi and he was a little kid and he was a puppet king. And then the peacock. All right, it's pretty fascinating. We have more pictures here, Chinese chess. So I'm guessing this is a hangout place. You hang out in the front and then you got food in the back probably. Now whoever set this up did it wrong. Should I touch it? <laughs> even though you're not supposed to? Um, they don't even have to, oh, here you go, the general right here. So let's fix it for them. There we go, that's more realistic right here. All right, and there's one more museum here, the Dai Loi Museum, which used to be a gambling den. Let's go check it out. Yeah, so this used to be Vegas in Chinatown, over Vegas in Chinatown. You got the dominoes over there. This, I don't know how to play with sewing buttons and stuff. You got dices, I would assume. More dominoes. Some po uh, cards, blackjack. And this must be where you get the money and stuff. Wow. And I know it's low lighting. Uh, the GoPro sucks during low light, but 
I'm sure they had the same kind of light mood back then, you know, keep it kind of shady. And check this out, the lottery room. Another reminder, this is the lottery room. These ping pong balls, they all have like Chinese words over here. Ew. And here's the money room. They keep it back here to keep it safe, I guess. That's about it. I mean, it's kind of hidden, but it's right next to an alley. There's a window right here, so if you really wanted to break in or do something shady, here you go. And then you got a safe here. What is this? Must be like newspaper cutouts and stuff. There's more right here. And then you got some Chinese instruments. Like I said, back then, Lock used to be one hell of a place. Just look at all these people back then. And nowadays, it's just so empty. Private room, you got some more tools over here. But yeah, this used to be the hangout spot where people hang out when they got a little bit too much money. Wow. They got some pretty interesting things here. Look at this antique store. They got DVDs that no one uses anymore. Look at that. If you want this machine right here, I don't know what that is. Is it like a fortune telling machine? You can get it for $7,400. You can probably find some pretty sick antiques in there. Wow. So I got a art gallery right here. This must be the man with his wife and his girlfriend right here. <laughs> wow. Now we're gonna go up these stairs, go to the main road and check the back side out. Cause you know, sometimes you can't just look at the front. You gotta check the back out. So you know what you're getting yourself into. So now we're on the main street and then over here you see a restaurant, the Lock Garden. And I don't know if these houses are private residents now, but they all used to be shops. Like look at this, looks more like a private residence now. Oh, we got a cat here and then we also got some sunsick what dude um so never ending notices you got a little cat here little chinatown cat what's up man here yeah. not interested all right and you have the last store on the block the yun tong meat market general merchandise so this used to be a huge store and now it's abandoned i guess all you see in there are like tools and stuff. And you got a car here, so who knows? This could be your private residence. But yeah. All right, so that's pretty much it for Lock. There's still one more town up the road. We're gonna go visit that place and then call it a day. Let's go. All right, so we are in Cortland, and there used to be a huge chat town here, but. After driving around for a little bit, I couldn't find any remnants of Chattown. So, <laughs> but I did manage to find an abandoned courthouse though. Check this out. Wow. See if there's anyone in there. Maybe it's not abandoned, but it sure isn't in use right now. So yeah. Kind of sucks that I can't find any remnants of an old Chinatown here, but that's okay. The story goes the same. There used to be a huge Chinatown here, and then mysterious fires kept burning it down. And then eventually the Chinese got more educated, so they were able to go overachieve in society. You know, they became doctors, lawyers, engineers, programmers, you name it. So yeah, 
Anyways, so today we got to see a few towns on the Sacramento River and they were pretty interesting, I would say. And I hope you guys learned a few things about the Chinese people here in the Sacramento Delta. And as for me, it's time to get the hell out of here. And thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until my next video, Jack is off.